Welcome back to my channel. I am Elise, founder of Let Us For Life, and today, guess what, y'all? Take a wild guess. Just take a wild guess. Your girl is debt free. <laughs> I am so excited. I'm so hyped. Like, God has been coming through with the blessings, y'all. When I tell you that man been blessing me, that man has been coming through. So, I'm 100% debt free. I literally was in so much debt to where I was like, I have to do something about this. If not, it's gonna be a lot of problems. It's gonna be a lot of issues in my near future. So I need to get my life together. I'm no financial guru. I am no person who ever took a financial class. I literally, I took an accounting class when I was in college and I didn't even understand what that man was talking about. So that don't even count. <laughs> So the only way that I was actually able to be financially free is through reading books, through listening to podcasts, YouTube videos, and honestly, just through like trial and error. That's honestly the real reason why. Messed up, learn from it. Okay, when you know better, you do better. And that was the reason why. So I want to come on here and just help others who are trying to get financially free, especially those that are in the military. I want to give you tips and tricks of how I was able to do it. It's possible. You don't have to be no millionaire and then you become debt free. You can do it right now. And these are the tips and tricks that I use to help me become financially free. And I pray that it blesses you and that you can learn something from it. So let's go ahead and hop into the video. So number one, the first suggestion that I have as far as you becoming debt free is you have to know how much you owe. You, that's the number one thing, right? It's hard to pay off debt if you don't even know how much you owe. So it's going to hurt at the big old, listen, when I saw my total debt, y'all, I was like, I didn't even know that many zeros could be in one bill at one time. I honestly didn't know that. You have to sit down. You have to be real with yourself. You have to keep it 100 with yourself. And you have to look at how much you owe. You need to know how much you owe for your student loans, for your credit card, for your car note, for car insurance, renter's insurance, whatever your debt is, credit card, you need to know exactly how much you owe. And you need to put it on a sheet of paper, write it out and say, I owe this company this much. I owe that company that much. That's literally what I did. So oh, let's go ahead and look at the total amount that I owe. It's gone. <laughs> I can't even believe it when I actually look at it, but let's go ahead and bring out the receipts of how much I actually owed everybody. And I'm gonna I'm be 100 with you and I'm gonna show you exactly how much I was able to pay off. So let's look at this amount of debt that I owed. So number one was my student loans. Sally Mae didn't want me to be great. I had almost $30,000 in student loans. For my car, it was, I wanna say it was around like 17,000. Plus seventeen thousand. Mm, 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 mm. My credit cards were about. I didn't really max out on credit cards like that, to be honest with you. I'm not gonna lie. I had maybe like maybe a hundred dollars for debt for credit cards. Then I had car insurance. So I was, when I say I had debt, like I was trying to pay off every single thing. Even if I know a car insurance is like six month intervals. It was still considered debt for me because they were still charging me and I needed that to be cleaned and wiped off my record for that six month interval. What should I owe? I think I owe like one, it was like 130 every single month. So for six months. So we're going to do 130 times six. Okay, cool. What else did I owe? Renters insurance. I mean, that was really nothing. That's like $12. 12, yeah, like $15 each month. So 15 times 12. So my total amount of debt was $47,820, almost 50,000. Might as well round it up. I didn't even include taxes. I didn't include any other stuff, but my total debt was around 50,000. It's crazy. Like just looking at that is crazy. So after you know how much you owe, the next step is to start organizing your bank accounts. And so what I mean by that is you need to make sure that all your bank accounts are organized as far as what you're going to use that account for. I do not mesh accounts. I don't flip flop, put money here, take money out, put the money in there, put it. Anybody got time for all that? 
I keep my accounts. This is what it is. 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 And I make sure that I know for every single account what I'm going to be using that money for. So, for example, a lot of people just have a check-ins and savings. That's cool if you are like living at home with your mom and daddy. That's cool if you don't really have a lot of bills and you're just starting off so you're trying to build your credit. It's fine for most people. But for me, I am. I need self-discipline. I need like a cap. On certain stuff so I actually have two checking accounts and I also have two savings accounts I have four accounts all together all with USAA and how I organize my account is so the first checking account is what I call like my fun money that's the money that I use to go out with my friends that's what I use if I want to go shopping that's the money that I use to go get my nails done whatever I need to get done that's my fun money and it comes only out of that account now that account has a cap on it. You know what I'm saying? You feel me when I'm, do you feel what I'm putting down? It has a cap to it. It's a budget on that. If I run out of money in that account, your girl is tapped out, tapped out for the month and I can't do nothing. Like that's literally how I have to put myself on a budget because if I don't, I will overspend. I know myself, I already listen. So I had to put myself on a budget. So that's the first account. The second account is strictly for bills. That's only money that's gonna be used for bills, groceries, stuff like that. That's what that second checking account is. Now I know how much money is supposed to be in that. I know where it should be for, as far as like for rent payments and electricity and all that stuff like that. That's that second account. Now the first savings account, so those are my two check-in. The first savings account is gonna be like my, I call it like a purpose fund. That's just the name that I came up with and that helps me. So every single paycheck, I'll put like maybe $20 in that account or I put $50 in that account. And for that account, I use it towards my purpose. Anything that I'm trying to do with my foundation for if I need like some type of equipment for videos, um, I really don't use equipment, I just use my phone to be honest with you. But if I wanted to upgrade, that's the money that would come out of that account for my business, for a book. So whatever I'm trying to do with my life, it comes out of that funding. Last savings, that's what I use for emergency funds. Like if something were to pop off and I needed money right away, that's that account. So four accounts, first account checking is for fun money, the second account is for bills, that third account is for my purpose, and that last account is for emergency purposes only. So that's how I organize my accounts. You can organize your accounts for whatever lifestyle you have or whatever you know is better suited to your needs or tailored to what you desire in accounts. So, however, that's the blueprint that I use for me and that helped me to stay on budget and it also helped me to kind of tailor and save more money. So my third tip is Everybody always says this, it should be common sense, but if you wanna reduce your amount of debt, you have to pay more than the minimum. The minimum is a target rate that the company will give you to pay off your debt. And that's basically like, okay, if you keep up with paying this amount, you should, over time, be able to pay off all your debt. Now, this is not including interest rates. This is not including stuff that they charge you if you late, this doesn't include other stuff. So there's so many hidden fees behind just paying the minimum. What I did was I would pay double the minimum. And now everybody can't do that. Everybody can't do that for every single account. I understand it. But if you can give more than the minimum, y'all, I'm telling you, you can pay down so much debt just by paying more than the minimum. And a lot of times people like to think of it like, Oh, if I pay the minimum and I pay more than the minimum, I'm still paying the same amount. But you're not, though, because when you pay more, you, you're you literally also helping with that interest rate. When you just pay the minimum, you're still going to have interest rate growing with you. You think you're going to be having the same amount at the end, but you're not. And that's what people don't realize. If you're trying to pay off all your debt, I'm telling you, even if it's $20 more, $20 more than the minimum will help you to reduce that um that total amount of debt and it'll help you to pay off your bills faster so number four is along with what i just said you need to tackle the bills with the highest interest rate first now this comes down to so remember the first step was to look at all your bills and see how much you owe with that you need to be looking at the interest rates for all of your bills all these companies when they give you your final bill and they say hey this is how much you owe they should also be telling you what's your interest rate do not just pay off bills and just think it's going towards your interest rate. Do not just pay off bills and thinking that you are just paying off a bill. You need to know what is the interest rate that you're charging me? 
And what I did was for student loans, I went to the app that I was using to pay off my student loans and it broke it down as far as every single loan and how much interest rate I had. Now for some student loans, I had like 5% interest rate. I had three, I had two, I had one that had like 8% interest rate. They tried it. I was like, okay, cool. So I'm about to tackle this eight one. This eight one about to be gone real, real quick. <laughs> Then I can work my, my way down and it made me feel so good when you can see a loan disappear. When you can see where you actually, your money is going to, you can see the progress that you're making and it makes you want to just continue paying off that loan. So tackle the interest rates um, that are higher first versus just giving them your money. Because at the end of the day, when you just give a company your money, they're going to apply that money to whatever they choose. It may not even be towards your bill. And so you need to tell them, hey, I want it going towards this 8% interest rate first. Don't play with me. <laughs> Don't play. And that's why I love the app because it can literally, you can literally plug it into where you want your money to go. Know where your money is going. Tackle the bills with the highest interest rate first. And then you can work toward the little one. So knock out that 8% interest rate, that 5%, that 2%, and then you can, you know, work on that 1% later. But if you just pay and pay and pay, you don't even know where your money is going. Number five is all extra money that you get does not equal more spending. When you have more money, that's more opportunity for you to save. That comes with knowing the greater goal. If you are just having more money come in and you're constantly spending more money, you're getting yourself into more debt. You have to remember the goal. You have to remember what you set out to do. And it does take a lot of self-discipline. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It takes so much self-discipline to keep yourself on a budget, to stay consistent with your, you know, with your giving, to stay mindful of your spending because it's so easy to get sucked in. Even Amazon. I mean, just think of all the online stores that you it's nothing for you to spend money. You don't even think about it. So you need to know that extra money does not mean extra spending. Extra money equals more savings. If you get money from tax returns, I know you want to ball out cash out i get it i feel you i understand you feel you should treat yourself do not do it use that money and you put it towards more towards the bill if you get a bonus at work if you're in the military and you make rank i just made rank do not use that extra money and say okay now i can splurge now i can eat out red lobster olive garden every single night <laughs> no that's not what we're doing use that extra money towards all of your debt. Now, this is another example. When you get extra money, say like when you, if you make rank, because I'm always looking out for my military people, that don't mean you just get an apartment at the beach. I mean, that's everybody's dream. Everybody want to be overlooking the view. Trust me, I'm claiming it into existence one day, okay? I will be overlooking the beach one day. However, the apartment that I'm in is nice, it's affordable, and to be quite honest, this is the same apartment that I was living in when I was an airman. So just because I made sergeant doesn't mean that I'm gonna ball out on this apartment and just let my BAH cover it. No, what we gonna do is we gonna pocket that extra money say to save for a bill or I'm gonna use it to pay off this debt. That's what I'm gonna do. And you have to live below your means. I'm not saying you go out looking rusty, crusty, and dusty, but at the same time, if you have a goal in mind, you need to budget yourself. You need to have self-control and it's gonna take so much out of you to look at the end goal. And once you get to that end goal, then you can enjoy life. Then you can splurge and do whatever you want to. You paid off your debt, but when you have debt, you have to be disciplined in it. I'm telling you, I'm trying to tell you. Six is, this is a hard one for a lot of people. This was really hard for me, but you have to cut out some certain things in your life. And it kind of went to my last point of knowing, you know, where you stand at and knowing how much you, you are paying for your rent or whatever, but getting your nails and your hair done. Now, there was a period in my life to where I literally did not get my nails done at all. Like your girl was looking, you know how I was looking. So I would YouTube videos and I would figure out how to do my own nails. I would paint my own nails every single Sunday, do my own feet, have my own little manicure, pedicure place. You couldn't tell me I didn't own me a nail shop because, you know what I'm saying? I was just doing my own stuff. I learned how to do my own hair. I'm no beautician. I am no little guru on YouTube who does hair and stuff like that. Like I love, I naturally enjoy doing hair. So I do have hair videos. 
but I didn't go to school or I didn't do anything special. There are certain things that you're just going to have to cut back on. You're going to have to look at the bigger goal and your bigger vision for your life. And you're going to say, you know what? At one point in my life, I, I will be able to afford this. But right now, getting my nails done and paying over $50 for a manicure and a pedicure every two weeks it's just not reasonable right now for my goals yes i want me a lace front yes i want me some version whatever indigo curly weave i don't know what y'all be wearing lace front wigs <laughs> yes i want that but i can't afford that right now and there's going to be sacrifices that are going to be made eating out you you can't you're just not going to be able to do it i'm sorry every single weekend you cannot do it you're gonna have to have discipline in that area. You're gonna take yourself to that good old kitchen and you're gonna have to do your little meal prepping and your food prep so that you are not eating out constantly. Some people love Starbucks. You're gonna have to take yourself again back into that good old kitchen and you're gonna have to make your coffee every morning. How about you just get the Starbucks creamer, do your little creamer thing and then you feel like you still at Starbucks, get you one of them Starbucks cups and you got Starbucks, voila. You got homemade Starbucks in your local kitchen, bow. See, there's just certain things that you're just gonna have to cut out and it's gonna suck for a period, it's an adjustment. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna front, it was very hard for me. But once I made that adjustment, actually able to see what my hard work was paying off, I was like, okay, I can do this. It's not forever. It's not like I'm always gonna be in this season, but right now, this is the season that I'm in, and this is what I'm gonna have to do. And honestly, I'm telling you, it looking back at it, I'm just thankful that I did make those sacrifices because if I didn't, I would I would have still been in debt. And for me, it's like either you look good, but you broke, or you are financially free, and I have to make sacrifices for a short period of time. So number seven is looking at all of your subscriptions and knowing exactly what can be cut off and what you don't need. So for example, you got 150 channels um, on your cable and you can't even watch all them channels. Ain't nobody go, you know you ain't watching 150 channels every single weekend. You can, you can downgrade, you can downgrade. Now what you could do is you can get that good old fire stick, you can hook it up and you can stream channels. I ain't saying nothing illegal, but you can do what you gotta do if you know what I'm trying to say. You can download Netflix, you can do Hulu, whatever you gotta do, but knowing what subscriptions you have and knowing which ones you don't need. Amazon Prime, I know you want your package in two days. I know, I understand. But if you can cut that back and you can just wait a week for your package, like a waiting a week for a package is normal. That's the normal, the, that's the normal business days, five to 10 business days. If you can wait a week, you can cut down on that bill dramatically. If you're trying to pay off debt, these small little bills that you have will eventually add up. That's some money that you could be saving. Think of different ways that you can save. That's just some examples. You don't necessarily have to cut that out, but just think of different ways that you can save as far as all these subscriptions off, or just think of ones that you don't even use that you would subscribe to. Your credit cards, your credit cards. Now, for me, credit cards weren't really a big deal. Um, a lot of people kind of get sucked into them and they start owing a lot of money on them. That was never the case for me, thank goodness. Credit cards can work for your good. I know a lot of people are opposed to credit cards. A lot of people say like, don't use credit cards. Um, I feel like credit cards can be very beneficial for you depending on how you use them. Personally, how I use them and how I was able to literally boost my credit is I use them for small purchases, use them for gas, use them for like a small amount of groceries, use them for when you go to buy something small or something simple. That's a simple way and easy way of how you can use credit cards. It's showing a debt, okay, and then once you actually pay off the debt, it's like, okay, she can pay her bills on time. It's a small debt. Now, if you wanna go out and ball out on vacation on the credit card, see, I didn't tell you to do all that. I didn't tell you to do that, but use credit cards for small purchases. I'm telling you, y'all, your credit score will go through the roof. So how a credit card works is for a small purchase, it's gonna show a debt. And what I like to do is I kinda like to just let this, the debt sit just for a little while. You don't wanna just pay it off automatically. But I let it sit for maybe like a week, maybe two or three weeks. Okay, it's showing that I owe them something and I, because it's a small purchase, I go ahead and pay it right off. Like it's nothing, $20 of gas, that's it. I mean, I'm in Cali, so it ain't gonna be no $20 worth of gas. It's gonna be about that 30 or that 40 worth of gas. But you get what I'm saying, you catch my drift. What I'm trying to tell you is use 
credit cards for small purchases only. And then once you pay off the debt because you already have that money, you're not balling out, you're not maxing out your credit card. You're just using it for small purchases. It looks good and it, show, it literally builds your reputation with your credit. And I'm telling you, it will literally boost your credit score. I'm telling you, you ain't, don't say I didn't tell you. Just try it out and let me know if it works for you. I couldn't talk about money. I couldn't talk about finance. I couldn't talk about anything regarding your debt without talking about how tithing has helped me. Tithing has blessed me. Like, it's literally has shifted my mindset on so many different things. And even if you're not a godly person, even if you're an atheist, even if you don't believe in God, I'm not knocking you. I believe in God. I believe in Christ. That's just who I connect with. <laughs> so tithing is basically when you give 10% to um, God. And that's just a form of sacrifice and showing just to be financially steward of your money. Now, I was like, I was brought up in the church, how you supposed to tithe and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 tithe, tithe, tithe. But it was hard for me. I don't know about nobody else. Everybody don't tell their true testimony. But as far as me, as far as me, listen, time was hard for me, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, cause I was in debt. I had so much money to pay off. I had bills, and so I was like, "You want me to give ten percent to y'all too on top of that?" And it's like you're giving it to the church, and you're not giving it to God. And that was the misconception that I was having. I was giving it. I felt like I was giving it to the church, and the church kept talking about it. But God shifted me through a whole sermon, a whole lecture, me spending time with him. And he showed me, like, you're not giving it to a church. You're giving it to me. And I was so faithful, y'all. Even when I didn't even see a return, even when I wasn't even expecting nothing. You don't tithe just so you can get a blessing back. You tithe because that's what we're called to do. You do it to your local church, whatever church you go to, and you just give them 10% of your paycheck. And what happened for me is... I started giving 10%, 10%, and I'm like, okay, I started getting, after a while, you start to build, like, your faith muscle, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to give it to God, because he's been so good, this is the least I can do. After a while, I honestly started to give more than my 10%, like, more than I had to, and when I tell you God showed out in my life, y'all, the reason why I am debt free, y'all, is because God came through with the come through, even if I didn't even if I had the amount of money to pay off my debt the way I should have, God has blessed me in so many different areas because of my faithfulness and tithing. I'm trying to tell you, if you want to have God bless your life, if you want to have, like, literally running over a blessing, like, you, room, you don't even have room enough to receive all the blessings that he has for you. And it's not just going to be financial blessings. It's not even, I ain't even talking about money. Let's just throw money out. I'm just talking about that favor. I'm talking about the oil that he's going to put over your life. Baby, give your tithes to Jesus. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to tell you that man will blow your mind. So that's just a quick summary of it. I gave my tithe. I was faithful in that area. And I'm telling you, do the same thing and God will bless you. Now, it may not always be financial blessings. You're not supposed to give tithing just to get something back. Do it out of kindness of your heart. Let God show you how much he wants you to give. Give to the needy. Give to the poor. Help those out that are in need. And I'm telling you, God, I'm telling y'all, God is going to bless you so much because of your faithfulness and your your heart of giving to others and to him. So hopefully this video helps. I pray nothing but good things, nothing but prosperity, nothing but blessings for each and every one of y'all. Let me know down below if you were able to be financially free, what tips and tricks do you use. Let me know what worked for you. Some of this you may be able to apply to your life and then some of it you may not. However, within all of it, just know that you can be financially free. It's not a far-fetched idea that you will somehow get to one day. It's not something that you will achieve when you get older. Be financially free right now. You have exactly what it takes to be financially free right now. Save your money, save your coins, allow, you know, just wisdom to be used with your spending. And I'm telling you, you're going to be able to pay off all that debt, no matter the amount. So as always, I love you, but most importantly, God loves you. If you need encouragement or you know somebody else that may need encouragement, please write into my foundation, www.lesflife.net. I hope you have an amazing day. Please like, share, subscribe, and, and I will see you on the next video. I dream about it. I go get it. That's how I do it. Not in the stars. I'm not lucky. I just.